In our last video, we overclocked the 5950X. Today, we're going to try to overclock the RTX 3090, specifically the ASUS Strix OC. We're going to try to see just what kind of scores we can get in TimeSpy and see how my CPU and my graphics card compare to other computers of similar configurations when running TimeSpy benchmarks. All right, so one of the first things we're gonna to wanna to do is if we're gonna start trying to set some high benchmarks for our RTX 3090, uh, or any graphics card for that matter, we're gonna to wanna to disable any of the programs and applications that are running in the background that might reduce system performance. So to do that, I like to run msconfig. What all of that allow you to do is you can switch to a selective startup mode. What you wanna do is you wanna unload startup items. And there's a few other steps we're gonna to need to take, but uh, then you go over to your services tab, you wanna hide all your Microsoft services and then hit disable all. Now, disabling all of the services that are non-Microsoft basically lets your computer boot up clean with really not a whole lot extra running in the background. Now, if you're gonna be running 3 Mark, there's a couple of services you're gonna to need to turn on. You're gonna need the FutureMark system info service. Otherwise, 3 Mark won't be able to determine what hardware you have on your system and uh, it won't actually be able to validate your scores. So then the next thing you'll wanna turn on is your Steam client service because otherwise when we try to run 3 Mark, Steam's gonna complain and say, hey, uh, I can't find my service, I have to reinstall it. So those are the only two services that we're actually gonna need to uh, have running. So the next thing you're gonna wanna do is load up your task manager. Go to your startup tab, sort by anything that's status enabled. We're gonna disable everything that's enabled here. You don't want anything enabled in your startup because again, uh, we're trying to disable all background utilities so we can try to set some high 3D Mark Time Spy scores. So the next application you're going to want, if you're going to be doing some overclocking on your graphics card, I recommend uh, MSI Afterburner. It's kind of the standard for most overclocking for most GPUs now. Uh, ASUS has their own tool. Pretty much everyone has their own tool. Um, unless you're going to be doing a custom BIOS or doing like hard modding on the graphics card, the MSI Afterburner is the easiest way to squeeze a little bit extra performance out of your graphics card. So what we're going to do before we make any additional changes to our graphics card, we're going to reboot so that we can get that nice clean boot with no services running in the background. So let's reboot and we'll be right back. All right, so our 3090 is water cooled so we don't have to worry about any thermal throttling. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to just max out our power limit and our temp limit. Uh, go ahead and apply that. Then I'm gonna start off with a 100 megahertz core boost bump. Uh, and I'm gonna start out with a uh, 800 megahertz memory clock bump. Now, if you're starting out with your graphics card, you might wanna go in um, 25 to 50 megahertz increments for your uh, actual uh, clock speed. And for your memory, you wanna go up in about increments of about 100. Uh, if you start seeing artifacts on your screen or you start getting any kind of like weird things happening, uh, crashes, then you want to kind of di start dialing back either your core clock or your memory clock. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to load up uh, 3D Mark Time Spy. And of course, you can do this with any other benchmark if you're trying to set some records. The first thing I want to do is run it at these settings and kind of see is this stable? Is this not stable? So I do have a stock run that I can compare to already. So we'll kind of look at how far this can get us. So let's go ahead and run the time spy benchmark and I'll have to turn off OBS to do that. So um, let's run the benchmark and we'll see what the results are. All right, so our first initial run with a 100 megahertz clock increase and an 800 megahertz memory clock increase, uh, we are sitting at 21,795 graphics performance, uh, an overall score of 20,263, which is excellent. Um, but we can do better than that. So let's see if we can crank this up a little bit higher and we'll try to do another run. So we'll actually increase this to 150 and we'll try a memory clock of 1000. Now, again, if you're doing this on your own card, I recommend going up in increments of 25 or 50 on your actual GPU core clock uh, and then on your memory clock going up by about 50 or 100 um, to just try each run to make sure that you're running stable, that you're not having any temperature issues, that kind of thing. Because if you're air cooled, you may run into some challenges and issues with overheating on memory or having errors or crashes much lower down on the clock settings. All right, so we're also gonna move this core voltage slider to 100, which really doesn't do anything. Um, the voltages run kind of on a curve anyway on this graphics card. 
Um, you can play with the voltage curve, so you can actually assign lower and undervolt your GPU. Okay, so we're gonna do another run and we'll see where it lands. All right, so after that run, we're at a 22,160 graphics score for a total of 20,575. Uh, CPU score hasn't really changed because we haven't modified anything on the CPU. Uh, so let's see if we can tweak this thing just a little bit further. So uh, let's go with 175 for our core clock. I'm gonna start reducing the amount of clock speed that I'm increasing, uh, just because we're gonna start to run against a bit of a ceiling here shortly. Uh, I'm gonna also put my memory clock up to 1100, and let's do a run on that and see if that's stable. All right, so we had another stable run at plus 175 to the core, plus 1100 to the memory. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna increment by 10. We're probably gonna run out of headroom on the core here right away. Uh, I don't know how far we can stretch the memory though. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find if we're stable at 185 to our core uh, and a plus 1200 to our memory clock. We'll just kind of set that up and see if it comes in stable. So to do that again, we'll just go 185, 1200 on our memory. All right, we're gonna run the test again and see where it lands. So we had another stable run at plus 185 on our core and plus 1200 on our memory. So um, our graphics score is now sitting at 22,355 and our overall at 20,697. All right, so for our next run, I'm going to increment to um, 190 megahertz plus to our core clock. I don't think we're gonna get much higher than this. Um, and then we'll dial it back if it crashes and we'll start playing with our memory clock to see how high we can get that. All right, so we managed to have another stable run at plus 190 and plus 1200. So I'm gonna bump it up to 195 and see if it's still stable there. All right, so at plus 195, it was unstable and it crashed. So uh, we know that 195 is a little bit too high. Now I'm gonna dial it back to 185 because if 195 isn't stable, 190 is probably not completely stable either. We're here to try to get high scores. So what we're gonna do is leave it at 185, but I'm gonna now bump my memory clock up to 1300. I wanna see how far we can push the memory before we start getting crashes or artifacts because now that I know that my clock is gonna be max stable at about plus 190 or plus 185, uh, then that's where we're gonna leave the core for now. So with the memory speed set to 1300, uh, let's go ahead and try to do another run and see if we can't beat that score. For some reason, the core clock wasn't getting over 1950, uh, probably because after the crash, some of the settings needed to be restarted. So I just powered off the computer, powered it back on, and I found uh, my sweet spot to be plus 185 on the core and plus 1300 on the memory clock. And that's about as high as I can go and keep it stable through multiple runs. So now that we've settled on plus 185 and plus 1300, the next thing that I'm gonna do is go and overclock the CPU. So in my last video, we got the CPU running uh, at about 4625. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go push the CPU to the max that I know that it can do. And we're gonna run this benchmark. All right, so after setting the best overclock that I can get on my CPU, uh, we were able to hit a 21,319 overall score in Time Spy. Uh, graphics score 2247, uh, CPU score 16475. So um, I'm pretty happy with that. That uh, falls under the uh, legendary category. And so let's see how that compares with some of the other results online. So when I look at how my computer fares against the other computers in Canada with a 5950X and a 3090, I'm actually in the top 20, which I'm pretty pleased with, to be honest. Um, now, this is my 30, 21364 score. Um, we only got 21319 this run, but I was able to do better uh, in a previous run, and I've actually got a lot of different runs. You'll see my name's kind of all over the top 40 here, just because I have been kind of pounding out runs constantly. Um, but yeah, so 20th place overall in Canada with this hardware configuration, I'm happy with that. And if we look at Delta King, who's the person at the top, um, I actually beat their CPU score by a substantial amount with my 5950X, but their graphics card score really beat mine. 
And so if we look at their graphics scores, they were running at 2,340 megahertz, and I was running at 2,190. Now I know that I can't run at 2,340. Mine's just not stable. Uh, without doing something like a shunt mod or uh, a custom BIOS to allow myself to overvolt or um, get past some of the power limits. Because at, at 2190, I'm already running uh, 480 watts, 485 watts. Yeah, my peak so far is 485.9 watts. So um, I would definitely need a custom BIOS to run it any higher. I've played with the voltage curves, undervolting just adds instability. So uh, this individual was able to get their card to run at 2340 megahertz. Yeah, so they were running their memory at um, 1340. So I was actually running my memory a little bit faster than they were, but they were able to run their GPU clock much higher. So I can't do that without more power for this particular card. So getting first place in Canada is just not something that I can do uh, unless I'm doing voltage mods, power mods, hard modding the card. Uh, custom V BIOSes and uh, potentially some uh, liquid nitrogen cooling. I can tell you with almost absolute certainty that this uh, graphics card by Delta King is definitely running uh, some kind of customized power delivery or V BIOS just because I can see the average temperature is NA. So if you see NA, it means the temperature is below what the temperature sensor can register and it can't register negative temperatures. You know, for a daily driver that's water cooled, I'm really happy with this score. Uh, you know, I'm happy that it came out as a legendary score. I mean, that's pretty cool. Uh, and so, yeah, that's where we'll leave it. My graphics card uh, got me to 21.319 uh, for this video. 21.364 is my best that I was able to achieve with my 3090. And that's it. That's overclocking. So, um, a couple of quick tricks if you want to do better in TimeSpy is disable your multi-core uh, simultaneous multi-threading on the 5950X and also disable FMAX in your precision boost overdrive. Uh, this is going to allow you to get better CPU scores in TimeSpy overall because TimeSpy doesn't actually fully utilize the 5950X. So that's it for today's video. Thanks for tuning in and uh, I'll catch you in the next one.